Today we're talking about what's in my wedding bag for 2022. Hey everyone, this is Dimitri with Star Moment Photography. Thanks for joining me for another episode. Today we're going to be going over what's in my wedding bag for 2022. So since we started 2022, I've added some lenses to my arsenal that I want to add to my re wedding repertoire. And I just wanted to get, um, share with you guys what exactly I'm using this year for weddings and what each um, part of my kit is for, for which parts of the day. So let's get right down into it. So starting right here, we've got our two bodies, which the first one right here is the R5 which is a 45 megapixel camera. And then we've got the R6, which is a 20 megapixel camera. So you may be wondering why I have two different bodies, well, it's the similar bodies, but why one 45 megapixel and one 20 megapixel? So the reason is simple, storage space. So for the R6, it only has 20 megapixels, which conserves a lot of storage, um, uh, um, you know, storage space. I don't have to use a whole lot of storage for that. Plus, I find that for most parts of the wedding day, 45 meg, uh, bleh, 20 megapixels is more than enough for what I'm shooting. 45 megapixels, I usually t will use the, um, the R5 for like the portrait section, like the bridal portraits, the her, her and her husband, um, the um, bridesmaids, the groomsmen, that part. Anything that I know that I can use to um, this camera to make a large print for, that's what I'll use the R5 for. And I'll also use it for certain parts of the, of the wedding ceremony because I may need to crop in and 45 megapixels will give me a lot more flexibility in doing that than with the R6. So start, next we'll go um, and cover the lenses. So this first lens, which is on my R6, is the 24-70 f2.8. And this, I have to say, I didn't think I would really like this lens so much, but it's quickly become my most used lens when, I, when I'm doing weddings. It's so versatile. I can use it for virtually any part of the wedding day, from the getting ready shots, to doing details, the ceremony, the reception. I can even use it for certain portrait um, for certain portraits as well. So this lens, it's super, super versatile. And plus it has image stabilization. So it allows me to get th those really critical shots in focus without any camera shake. And it's also useful for video as well. If I wanna do like short little clips in between shots, it's very handy for that as well because I can shoot handheld and still get steady footage. So then the second lens is actually what I'm, I'm filming this with right now, which is the RF 15 to 35 millimeter 2.8, which it's similar properties to the 24 to 70. It's got image stabilization. It's great for video. It's also great for the wide angle work at, at weddings. So if I want to get a shot of the venue, if I want to get a shot of like the reception hall, the ceremony, um, section or the church that we're shooting, what have you. It's a great versatile lens for that. Um, I also use it during the reception when I want to get wide angle shots of like people dancing on the dance floor or um, when the bride or during the ceremony when the bride is walking out and I want a wide shot of her and her husband walking down back down the aisle with um, to get some some context of the shot of them walking out and seeing the guests and their reaction. So that's another versatile lens that I have there. Third zoom that I use for weddings would be this workhorse right here. It is the um, Canon 70 to 200 f 2.8 Mark II. I um, use this lens exclus almost exclusively for the um, for the ceremony. It allows me to be able to get nice close detail shots without getting too close to, to um, what's going on, and it allows me to just sneak, um, you know, getting um, expressions on people's faces, like the mom crying or like, catching the groom. Um, just crying or, or smiling or what have you. It's great for any one of those times when I want to get like that stealthy detail um, uh, um, without um, really 
ruining the moment, some so to speak. So it's really useful for that. I also use this for um, doing some, um, some reception work as well, for the same purposes. So then that's it for my zooms. Next, we'll start with the prime lenses. And starting out is my most versatile and probably my favorite prime right now, which is the RF 50 millimeter 1.2. This beast of a lens is so, so good. Like I love the, the creamy bokeh that this produces. It, it just creates such dreamy backgrounds. So I use this um, primarily for one, portrait sessions, because it gives just that natural field of view. So any part of the portrait day, I'll use that for the, I'll use this lens for that part of the day. I'll also use it if the, if like we're in a reception hall that's exceptionally dark. And even using strobes, it'll be a challenge to, um, without pushing the ISO too high. So that's where this lens comes in really handy. It's super versatile. It's just, I would say that the 50 is my second most versatile lens aside from the 24 to 70 and the 70 to 200 um, being the, the close third. So love that lens. And it, and as you can probably tell, it lives, it mostly lives parked on my R5. <laughs> so then my next prime and my second favorite prime is my 85 millimeter F 1.4. So this lens here has been my go-to bread and butter lens for portraiture um, until the advent of the 50. I still use this lens a lot when I want that, when I want more compression and depth of field. Um, and this lens will absolutely deliver 100%. Um, I use this typically for bridal portraits and certain and groom portraits as well. And I may also use this if um, if the reception hall is also really dark, but I need something with a little more reach than the 50. And um, another thing about this lens is that this also has image stabilization and um, that's very useful when shooting in those low light situations as well. And I don't want to get too much camera shake when I'm using like a slower shutter speed. And then my last lens and last prime that I use um, is the RF 100 millimeter macro. I use this lens expressly for the detail shots and the rings. So I'll do like, I'll use this when I'm doing my flat lays after I've done my wide angle angle shots of the flat lays with like, you know, using my 24 to 70, I'll use this for the ring shots, get really close up details of that. I'll also use it when I'm shooting um, the bride, um, putting on her earrings or necklace or whatnot, anything that I can get exceptionally close detail of, I use this lens for. Um, and unfortunately I only use it for that part of the day. I don't use it for anything else. So it's kind of a one trick pony. Um, but I love this lens. It's also a handy portrait lens in a pinch if um, I need something um, a little bit, you know, with a little bit more punch than the 85. So then, last but not least, my flashes. I use a um, Godox um, V1 um, round head stroke, um, um, well, I almost said stroke, round head speed light, and then I use a regular flash point um, um, square, um, square flash. Um, but I love these flashes, they're great on camera flashes for when I'm when I'm like shooting in dark reception halls or if I'm doing getting ready shots and there's no windows to to allow for natural light to use or what have you so they're very versatile um, you know they've got the bouncing heads and um, I especially love the um, the one because of the magnet, the mag, uh, I was going to say magma, but the magnetic head. So all I have to do is use a, a magnetic attachments to attach different modifiers on and it can um, alter the quality of the light that I'm getting from it. So it's very versatile there. Last but not, um, not uh, last but not least, I also use, um, I, I don't have them pictured here, but I have two um, Godox 8200s that I use for off-camera flash when I need additional light, when the uh, um, speed lights are not enough. And I'll usually trigger those with this, which is the Flashpoint um, R2 Pro C. Um, this um, gives me um, uh, um, control over my flashes, and I can even command these speed lights um, when they're connected to this as well. So it just makes a really nice, complete ecosystem for what my um, needs are. So 
that's um, in a nutshell what I use for the wedding day. Um, I've been very, I'm very happy with this kit so far. I may upgrade the 24 to 70 to the 28 to 70 f2. I've heard a lot of great things about that lens, but I'm gonna rent that first and just try it out at a wedding to see if it's all the rage that I've heard so many photographers, you know, saying about it. So with that guys, um, that's that concludes it for this episode. I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys think down in the comments. If you guys want to follow me, you can follow my Instagram page at um, um, Star Mono at Star, Mo at Star Moment Photos. You can also um, follow my work at um, Star Moment, www.starmomentphotos.com. And you can also follow my Facebook page and just type in Star Moment Photography. So thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.